Something a little bit different today. Usually my, uh, we, we read comments in this segment from, and messages, uh, comments and messages from people attacking me for things that I said. That's the point of the, of the segment. Uh, but this time we have comments and messages from people attacking me for things I didn't say. And not that they're accusing me of saying things I didn't say, but rather they are mad at me for not saying certain things. Now, we talked earlier in the show about the recent Trump interviews uh, where he said uh, stuff that I didn't like, and I explained why I didn't like it. I explained that today, just a few minutes ago, um, because I'm back at work, because it's Monday. And um, I did not, however, say anything about these subjects on Twitter over the weekend until Sunday night. Uh, you know, when I start doing a show prep, I do a little work on Sunday night. Um, but for most of the weekend, I, I didn't say anything at all about any subject. I was silent because I'm a married man with six kids, and uh, I don't spend my weekends on Twitter. At least I try not to. Actually, just to give you a, just to give you the full timeline here, you know, um, I talked about Trump's I talked about Trump's Megyn Kelly interview. I think that was on Thursday, and we talked about the Fauci stuff. And I was very critical of how he handled the Fauci stuff. The question about why did you give him a commendation and all that. I didn't mention the trans stuff because I didn't, I didn't, I hadn't seen that clip. I didn't know about it. I didn't watch the full interview. I saw the clips. Um, I only saw the Fauci clip. I finally saw the trans clip on Friday afternoon, probably. But at that point, I was heading to dinner with my wife. It's, it's, you know, this is the end of the work week for me, going out for a date night. I decided I'll wait till Monday. We could talk about it in greater depth. This is the kind of thing I want to flesh out. I want to talk about. Uh, then over the weekend, as we did on just a few minutes ago. Then over the weekend, the, the Trump Meet the Press interview came out. It came out on Sunday morning. And I didn't see that at all because uh, at first, because it's Sunday morning, I was at church. Well, I come back online late Sunday afternoon, and I find many, many posts and messages from conservatives, from DeSantis supporters, from people claiming to be longtime fans of mine, denouncing me for not having posted about either subject over the weekend. So I was with my family, with my wife and kids over the weekend, but that, that apparently was not a good enough excuse, according to these. These are I'm, ta- I'm telling you, my mentions were just, it was a little bewildering at first, because I logged back on, I saw all these people really angry at me, including people that, that I know are supposed to be on my side. And I'm thinking, what did I do? I haven't even said anything. And then I realized that was the problem. Uh, so I just want to read a couple of these. First one says, Matt has shown himself to be a gutless fraud. If his next tweet is not about this, I'm unfollowing him forever. I'm done with these unserious clowns. Theodore says, Matt is right there with Glenn Beck, no balls, but I'm sure he's got plenty to say about how everyone else should live and espouse his religious b****. Peter says, Matt Walsh has built a massive following commenting on conservative uh, politics and specifically on transgender issues. He regularly blasts inconsequential GOP politicians for going to the left on this, but when Trump refuses to say men can't become women, silence. Spence Rogers responding to that tweet agreed, saying, great point. Why? Because Ben Shapiro is the authorized DeSantis cheerleader over there. Walsh isn't allowed to talk about the primary. Knowles is the Trump slappy. Candace is the Vivek show. M to the G says, Matt won't speak truth to power because it affects his bottom line. Uh, Lots of comments like that. David uh, said, Matt, I'm so disappointed in you. Trump endorses abortion today and it's crickets from you. He cucked himself on the trans issue and you said nothing. I've been a fan for years, but now I see that you're a turncoat traitor. Sean uh, says, Matt, why aren't you speaking about these issues, uh, about these Trump issues? You've been silent all weekend. It's clear that you aren't willing to take a risk for the sake of truth. You're a coward. Okay. So a lot where those came from. Now, I've already given my take on these issues, and I've already told you why I was uh, absent from the conversation for a few days. I realized that uh, spending time with your family is not an excused absence, according to the hall monitors. It is what it is. Moving on from those points, I I just want to say a couple other things. First, just a general point here. Look, uh, if you don't need 24-hour armed security for your family, if you've never received a letter in the mail making threats against you and providing details about your home and your uh, movements that, that, uh, that they could only know if they were watching your house physically, if you've never had people show up outside of your house and take pictures of your house when your kids are playing in the front yard, and they come running in and screaming, saying, Daddy, there's someone outside. If you've never experienced being doxxed by so many people all at once that you're trending on Twitter because of it, if you've never been hacked and blackmailed and smeared and defamed, if you don't have a file of death threats the size of like a novel at this point, then I just don't want to hear your lectures about taking risks. I don't want to hear it. 
Like I, I, but but I am hearing it from a lot of from a lot of people. Oh, he doesn't have the courage. He's not speaking. What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Many of these from anonymous accounts talking about political courage when you've got nothing on the line at all. For most homeowners, window replacement isn't something they've done before, and for many, it isn't something that they want to do, but rather something they have to do. If you've put off replacing windows in your home because it's too expensive, I have great news for you. You can now get a free in-home window consultation and free price quote from Renewal by Anderson. Renewal by Anderson's signature service is committed to giving you the best customer experience possible through the perfect combination of the best people in the industry, a superior process, and an exclusive product. Right now, Renewal by Anderson is offering a free in-home or virtual consultation on durable, quality, affordable windows or patio doors for $0 down, zero payments, and zero interest for a year. Text Walsh to 200-300 for your free consultation to save $375 off every window and $750 off every door. These savings won't last long, so be sure to check it out by texting Walsh to 200-300. That's Walsh to 200-300. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting enrolls for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. Go to windowappointmentnow.com for full offer details. Now, I have always said what I feel needs to be said regardless of the consequences. And to hear lectures on political courage from people who've put absolutely nothing on the line, it's just, it's a bit much. It just is. Second, this attack on me was driven mostly by DeSantis influencers. Um, Whether they were paid influencers or not, I don't know. But either way, they apparently decided that it was a good political strategy to take one of the more prominent conservatives in media, which is me, uh, who's been a DeSantis supporter for years, and cast him as the enemy. What? What do you guys think this achieves? I'm your enemy now too? Me? I mean, I've dedicated hours of this show over the years. Hours. Cumulative hours to defending DeSantis against all manner of attacks, including recently. And now I'm on your list of bad guys? What are you trying to accomplish here? What do you think this accomplishes? Is it working? You know, there's another DeSantis supporter account with a a decent following that's been chastising me for weeks, as far as I can tell, for not being pro-DeSantis enough. Yes, you've supported him, but uh, but you you need to support him more. We need more. Really? So spending hours of my show defending him, talking about him, uh, you know, how I like him, why I support him, that's not enough? That's not good enough. Listen, if I'm not pro DeSantis enough, if I'm, you know, if I am your enemy now too, then who is your friend? Are, are you just going to drive them all away? Look, this is not about I don't care. You can say it. It doesn't bother me. It's just such a monumentally stupid strategy. Um, here's the thing, guys. My show will never, ever be a political ad for a candidate. It has never been, and it will never be. I will never spend the majority of my time promoting a political candidate. In fact, I will spend no time simply promoting a political candidate. I'll talk about them when they come up in the news. I'll defend them when they are deserve defending. I'll criticize them when they deserve criticizing. Um, uh, but I'm not a campaign surrogate. I'll never be one. I, I, I've had... There have been plenty of times when uh, when campaigns have made, uh, you know, made gestures to me, as you can imagine, that they would like to bring me into the fold to be more a part of the team. I always turn that down. And I don't go to the dinners when I get invited. Oh, come to a dinner with this uh, candidate and we'd just like to talk to you. And, and I don't begrudge candidates reaching out with that kind of thing. That's part of the job. But But I never go to the dinners. I don't do any of that. Um, and the reason is that, that that's just not, there are people who do that and that's fine. That's not who I want to be. I, I, I want to be an independent voice. I'm not even a political pundit. I don't focus on politics. I focus on culture, which is why we can go through uh, major political stories that I will almost completely ignore in some cases, not because I'm afraid to talk about them. And the political stories are the easy ones. If the political stories, no one's ever threatened to kill my whole family because of, of something I said about a political story. 
Uh, but I don't, I, I, oftentimes I'll ignore them completely just because that's not what I focus on in this show. I, I focus on the culture. That's what I care about. It's what I care about. It's what I think I have insight to provide on. You know, uh, many times also with these political stories, not these particular ones we talked about today, but other stories, I'll, they, they pop up and I'll look at the, the commentary that's been made on it and, and I'll think, yeah, well, most people have covered it. Like, I don't think I have anything to add on this. Um, and so those are the ones that I'll skip entirely. Uh, and then other ones will come up and I'll see a real cultural connection, like with these Trump things, you know, it has to do with trans and abortion, that, that, that really pertains to culture. And so, you know, I'll do 17 minutes on that. Um, but that's the, way that I, that's the way that I operate. That's the way that I do the show. Um, if you think that my focus should be elsewhere, if you think that I should be a surrogate for a campaign, if you think that I should be a a bigger team player or whatever, well, I don't care. But all I can say is just from a, from a, you know, from a strategic standpoint, like driving wedges, even between driving wedges to wedge out someone who's on your side could not be a dumber approach. Um, and uh, there's still time to correct it. There's not a lot of time, but there, there's still time. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.